Mae Swenson is up next. And the work of hers we read is Women, poem. And Mae Swenson is another one of our later 20th century authors. If you look into the written out lecture, you will see a picture, a photo of Mae Swenson. And you can see kind of the clothing she's wearing. To me, it looks kind of like late, late 60s, early 70s, maybe the dress. And uh, her hair, too, of that era. Yeah, with the, it's a bob cut. Which, uh, you know, bob cuts were popular in the 1920s, but then they came back again in the late 1960s, early 1970s. Um, yeah, or maybe late 1960s. Okay. All right. Also in the uh, lecture, the written out lecture, are a couple websites if you'd like to check them out uh, for more information. If you want more information about May Swenson or her literary works, there, there are links um, in a poets.org in there. And uh, there are no YouTube clips on May Swenson, but the following link, there is one from Weaver State um, that posthumously publishes an unpublished collection of Swenson's poetry along with a memoir from her brother. Now, if you recall, posthumously means um, after she died. So it was published after she was died. Okay, so uh, Mae Swenson. Yes, she is an American. She lived from 1913 till 1989. So she lived till about a uh, 76 years old. Yeah. She was born in Logan, Utah, of Swedish parents and spoke Swedish in the home growing up with English as her second language only. So Swedish was her native language from her family. Uh, her journals often commingled both English and Swedish in them. She was the eldest of 10 children in a quote unquote Mormon household. Her father was a professor uh, of mechanical engineering at Utah State University. May graduated with a bachelor's degree from Utah State in 1939 and then worked as a reporter for Salt Lake City's Deseret News. She later moved to New York City and became an editor for New Directions. However, in 1966, after she published more acclaimed collections of her poems, May retired from her editor's job to focus entirely on poetry. She served as poet in residence at several universities and was chancellor to the Academy of American Poets from 1980 until she died. Like May Sarton, Miss May was also a lesbian poet, although her writings more obliquely embodied lesbian themes and imagery. So it wasn't as maybe forthright as May Sarton. May did publish, this is May Swenson, I'm talking about now, she did publish a collection of love poetry and much children's poetry, in addition to more generalist volumes of poetry. Perhaps the most visually striking feature of May's poetry is her use of shape to describe themes in both time and space, as the poem we read of hers does. Women, that's the poem that we read of hers. And if you look at it, you will see it has a distinct shape. The lines are written in such a way that they create a shape. You can see that shape when you, when you uh, look at the poem. This shape poetry also features prominently in her suitably titled collection, Iconographs. So iconographs, that means like an icon, you know, something that you are, you are looking at. So May's poetry tends to draw on images from nature, both animal and landscape, to reveal human nature evidence there. Reminds me of uh, Gaudi's architecture. He often would draw on animal and landscape to cloak his architecture um, with meaning there. Anyway, um, May Swenson would draw a lot from animal and landscape, and you will see uh, in women that she draws upon animal imagery. 
you'll notice that there, in addition to the visual imagery she's creating with the way she wrote the lines in the poem. Um, and, and, and she draws upon these things to reveal human nature as if we are all part of the same natural web. So that's why she uses a lot of animal and landscape, um, and even maybe shapes that recall things from landscape or, or the animal world. Incidentally, May of May's poem question appears in contemporary Mormon writer Stephanie Meyer's book, The Host. So if you've read The Host, you know, you, you may know Sto Stephanie Meyer. Uh, when I say Mormon, it's Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. That's the um, official title, Mormon's Mormon nickname that uh, isn't really used so much anymore there. Anyway, Stephanie Meyer, she's a very famous author for uh, the Twilight series. She wrote another book called The Host. And Mae Swenson's poem appears in that. So if you've read that book or if you'd like to check it out, you may do so. And then be another Mae Swenson poem there. All right. Well, enjoy reading more about Mae Swenson in the anthology this week, as well as her poem that is appropriately titled for a class on women literature because it is, in fact, called Women. All right. 